right, welcome back, everybody. It is the top of the hour, which it means it is noon central time. And this is Big Talk for Small Libraries, the lightning round in which we have five presenters getting 10 presentations in uh, 50, or excuse me, five presenters giving five presentations, 10 minutes each. And so we're going to keep the introductions really short here. First up is how to start a great teen advisory board presented by Danielle Rasmussen the director of the Garland Public Library in Utah. Go ahead and take it away. Okay, great. Um, this is kind of how we started our um, Teen Advisory Board. Um, we decided to make it kind of fun, so we named it Order of the Phoenix. Um, we have shirts that say, are you in the order, um, bookmarks. Um, we set up a set of rules, which is my next slide right here. This is, let me see, there we go. Um, this is kind of their guidelines and duties. We tried to kind of keep it fun. Um, we tell them that they're an elite force. They love that part. Um, we tell them that they are, re you know, their requirements are to help out on a regular basis. Um, they help us come up with new activities, events, projects. Um, they seem to really, really love it. We have a, a big party at the end of the year for all of them. Um, and then we make them earn it. It's usually, we let them join as just, um, I can't remember what we call them. Um, just as kind of a, you know, oh my gosh, sorry, the word just left me. Right before you get in, you have to actually do all of these things um, before you're actually put in the order and given your shirt. Um, they have to bring at least three friends to three activities, be it every teen activity, or as many as possible. Um, you know, if there's a good reason, we let them out. We have a checklist um, that we have them check off to kind of make sure that they are, um, keeping up with what they're supposed to do because you don't want somebody to sign up and then never show up again and then expect to be at your big party at the end. Um, yeah, we just put them, you know, we tell them constantly that they're the elite, they're over things, we give them um, a lot of the responsibility. Um, we just put up posters at the school, um, we announce it on Facebook, we had some Facebook contests at the very beginning to kind of get the teens um, to join our Facebook. Um, and then we put all our reminders and all that on there, and then they can share our stuff, which has helped a lot. Um, um, most important thing when dealing with the teens to get them in your program is food. If you don't have snacks at your meetings, your activities, never going to show up again. I don't know why that's how it is, but it just is. Um, we always try to have our meetings and activities on the same day and the same time every month. Um, if we change the day, change the time, um, the kids just don't don't show up. Um, so we have it the third Thursday is our craft day. That It's always been that way. Um, our tab meeting is the last Thursday of every month. Um, and then we do a movie night the last Friday. And they just know that that's no matter what, that's the days that they're required to be here. Um, we make sure you let them plan and carry out the activities. If we've tried planning some stuff and then just having input, and they got really discouraged and just didn't want to do it. They want to plan it. They want to be over it. They want to see their vision kind of come to life, and they really seem to enjoy that. Um, we have special incentives. So at our sleepover, we do, we have a movie, and we provide dinner. We kind of do a potluck treat, so everybody brings a treat. Um, we provide <clears throat> a fun craft just in case they don't want to just sit and watch movies. We play board games. We do giveaways all night. Um, we don't sleep pretty much <laughs> at all. Um, we try to make them feel like a part of the library at all times. Um, give them, we give them specific volunteer duties. They're required to volunteer one hour a week. We have some that volunteer more. But we have a volunteer um, checklist that I've just slid inside of um, a sheet protector. And they get the dry erase marker and they check mark what they've done. Um, it makes it a lot easier for me to keep track and for them. Um, we did, um, try to keep it structured. We do have rules that they are required to sign, which I didn't put in here. Um, they're required to take home and sign, have their parents read over them and sign it as well. Um, the rules are the most important thing um, for us because teens get off track really easily sometimes. Um, and we expect them to look and act like they are actual employees at the library. If you're coming into work, don't show up in a tank top and short shorts, you know. Um, 
you're expected to look like you work here, act like you like here, look, work here, um, help people, um, and just, like I said, just, I think, keeping everything organized and keeping, you know, them on track has made a huge difference. Um, we've got, I think, eight members right now that are in the elite order that actually have the shirts and show up every time. Um, and then we allow anyone to come to the planning meetings um, if they want to. They're allowed to just show up and help plan. Um, we always provide a simple treat for that one, um, just because it gets expensive to buy food three times a month for the teens all the time. So um, I think that's my quick. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got a couple of comments coming in from Twitter. Uh, first one from Susie. I used to have a fantastic teen advisory board. Then they all graduated and went off to college. Mm -hmm. She hasn't found any new ones yet. Uh, yeah, that, that, that can be a problem. Um, yeah. And then uh, one other person says, sound advice for teen advisory board. Have food, consistent, regularly scheduled times, tried in two practices, but many libraries cut the food. Yeah, and that I think is the biggest mistake is to cut the food. Um, <laughs> really it is. If you don't have, I mean, at least popcorn or a bowl of, you know, M&Ms or something, they're just, they don't care. If you're not going to feed them, they just will not, will not be there. So that's, that's our big thing. Um, we do dinner and a movie once a year or two usually because we go all out on that one. And I think this year, we're a really, we only have 2,500 people. And this year we had like 120 teens show up to our dinner and a movie. So it was a little insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but food makes it, it's really, it's the deal breaker. If you don't have food, if you don't have some kind of incentive for them to want to be there, they aren't going to. They just, they don't care. Uh, we have a couple questions. So. One, do the teens help develop the rules? Yes. Um, my original board helped develop the rules. Um, we get a new board every um, September. Um, that way, if anyone decides that they don't want to be in it, then that's their walkout time. Um, and we go over the rules. We change them because, you know, every kid is different. Some rules get changed, and they help us go through them. Okay. And um, do the, what is the population you serve? Um, 2,500. Okay. And someone's asking, do the teens do their own fundraising? You know what? I actually do the fundraising, but I let them, I have a volunteer sheet, and uh -huh. they sign up. But they do help come up with ideas. Um, they came up with the idea two years ago to do um, library, National Library Week, we do a bake sale. And they uh -huh. put all the posters out, and they come and run the booth. Um, and they really love it. And then they help. We have a Wheat and Beat Day celebration that's three days mm -hmm. long, and they set up the booth and run our book sale and everything. Uh -huh. And we have somebody who's interested in your logo. How did you develop it? You know what? I actually have an amazing couple of people here that work at the library, and um, I hired a new guy. Um, he's probably only, what, 22, 23? And he actually came up with the Order of the Phoenix, and he just got on the internet and kind of pulled the logo. And um, because before we just had Teen Advisory Board, and mm -hmm. we still had people show up, but now that they think it's like a, a special thing to get into, they are way more likely. You know, they come in and actually ask about it. And we have posters up that just say, "Are you in the order? Contact Garland Public Library." We put them around town. Um, we hand out bookmarks when we're starting to try to get more people coming in. Um, and it, it seems to work pretty well. It makes it so they refresh pretty easy, and then they tell all their friends, and their friends want to be on it. But, you know, being keeping the requirements keeps it down to the people that really only really want to be here instead of just having those kids that show up, do a couple of things, and then, you know, never show up again. And our final question, do you have an initiation for them? You know what? We don't. That's actually a really good idea, though. So I might have to do that. <laughs> we usually um, have them come in and we give them their shirt um, and uh -huh. take a picture and post it on Facebook. But that's about the extent of what we've done. But that's a really cute idea. Okay. Um, I'm 
All right. That, yeah. that is 10 minutes. No more time. Thank you, Danelle. I uh, really appreciate you. that. And uh, that was wonderful. A lot of great comments, a lot of great questions.